Hello YouTubers, today we're going to look at a PS3 to fix it. Now, I apologise in advance, I actually ripped this apart and then I realised, well hold on, I can actually film this. So I'm just kind of quickly put it back together and I'll show you basically how you take it off. First thing you want to do, well obviously this problem now is it turns on and turns itself off so it won't basically boot. Um, some people call it the yellow light of death and there's, there's a few different names for it, but basically it means it's overheated if you have this particular problem. It's overheated, you just need to strip it and uh, repair the thermal paste, bang it back together, should be no problem. First thing you need to do is come to the side of it, take off this little plate with a little screwdriver, it just pops out, it's actually that way. And the, this is the hard drive now. Now, there's a little uh, screw in there, just a normal Phillips screw, take it out, push the hard drive to the side and it pops out, simple as that. Now the next thing, obviously I've taken this off, there's a little sticker here and it's a PlayStation sticker. Now obviously when you remove this, it means it's void. It's not a big deal because obviously PS3s now are quite old and there's no one in warranty anymore. So you remove the sticker, there's a little grub, well not a grub screw, there's a little cover. This is the little cover you remove and behind the cover is a T10 security bolt. Now what that means is, Camera zooms in. There's a little hole in the middle of it, um, so you need a T10 torque security bolt with a little hole in the middle. That comes out, so that comes out of there. When it comes out, you just slide the top, literally slide it towards you, and the top lifts off. Simple as that. One, two, three, four, five. Five is there. 6 is over here, you'll see you'll see little arrows on them simple as that once you take them bolts off again the camera gets this in the top just lifts off and then you get to see the actual gubbins of it like I said I apologise that I ripped this apart without thinking hopefully it comes across if not, there is videos on YouTube of how to uh, take a PS3 apart, but it is very simple. Now, this is where a few PS3s will differ. Some have card readers on the front of them, some don't. This one happens to have a card reader, so where you lift the, the front flap. Just put that back so you can see this flap lifts up here. That's the one with the card reader. So if you have that, two bolts, one here, and these are just normal Phillips now. You take that off, and underneath, underneath it is a little ribbon cable. You just put your fingernail underneath that black bit and pop it off. And be very careful with these ribbon cables. Now the next thing you want to take off, I think this is the uh, Wi-Fi antenna or the Bluetooth. I'm not 100% sure, but it's one of them. Um, again, this one has two bolts, just ordinary, sorry, two screws, just ordinary screws. And with a Wi-Fi cable, it goes all the way to the back. And another little bolt right there. So that can then come off. So you're left with this. And all you've got really there is the Blu-ray player and the power supply. That, that That's all that's there. Now, this is now loose because obviously you've, you've already taken the bolts off. You have a couple, now just as you lift it up, There is a big ribbon cable right at the back, you can just see that, it's right on there. And that's where it connects to the board. Again, get your fingernail underneath, flip it up, that's off, and then you're left with this. Next is your power supply. Now, you have three bolts on the back, one, two, three, and you have two bolts on the front, one, two. You have a cable here, just a normal joiner, that pulls out and you've got your earth strap which bolts directly onto your power supply, so you want to take that off as well. And in the back you've just got another cable. On the back you've just got another cable which just literally pulls out, simple as that. Then the whole power supply unit comes off. Now, one thing I have done here 
is obviously because I've stripped there was a lot of dust and I've cleaned all the dust off. You can hoover it, doesn't really matter how you get it off as long as you get all the dust off. This obviously looks clean because I've obviously done all that. Now there is there is two uh, plates here which I've obviously took off but don't take them off yet so them plates should still be on next thing you want to do is take all the bolts off the head and again you'll see arrows where you need to take them off go all the way around you see them all here so go all the way around the edge of it again they're just normal fillet bolts nothing special you want to take this off this is the little um, lead here for your uh, lights and stuff and again two bolts on the board as you're taking it off so this comes off little ribbon cable here same thing again pops off now there is lots of bolts on here so you want to obviously make sure you put them all to one side I've done a few of these now so I'm kind of used to it it's not actually a big deal but you know it is very straightforward so now we're back onto this so what we need to do is take the actual board and the heat sinks out of the plastic bottom tray once you've taken all the bolts along the side this just literally lifts straight up so you want to grab the back of it and just lift it up vertically with the black back plastic thing on so that just leaves that and we can move that to the side now when you turn this round we have our fan here again I've taken it off but you get the idea three screws a little cable pull out the cable take out the three screws take out the fan again good clean on the fan sounds now we can start seeing the back of one of our heat shrinks next thing you want to do is take off this plastic housing and there's just you have to be careful there's a few clips and they can easily be broke so you take off that and that comes off these are you can see them here look these are the little clips now just be careful with them because they are very easily broke that comes out of the little power supply plug at the back put that to the side now like I said you will find you'll have these on it's two screws and they're kind of they, they, as they push down they, they straighten up so take out the two screws there and there and these fellas pop off you see the heat shrinks again now turn it around now there's two screws or bolts here and you've got the little um, battery for your clock and stuff so you want to disconnect that disconnect them this obviously because you've taken all the screws off the back from the board this just comes up so as you take this off where your fans obviously mounted you can see all your cooling pads now this is basically what takes the heat away and keeps everything running um, obviously nice and cool so it's important that we clean these but we'll just put this to the side for the minute now we need to get our motherboard out again very simple all the bolts are taken off obviously there's two here but what you have to be careful of here there's two little clips behind well at the side of each of these uh, USB power points you can just see them there this one has four on obviously some of them do it depends which model you have but they're all basically the same and it's important to lift this towards you because at the back of it it has these clips that roll in you can just see them here that actually roll in behind the other plate of the motherboard if you're trying to lift this all up at once it's not going to come out so you literally roll it towards yourself and it comes out and you'll see these are the little clips I was on about now as you see that's, the, that's your motherboard there flip it back over take off this just be careful of all your uh, ribbon cables just make sure you don't do anything to them to pull them out nice and slowly now you can see these are the clips hopefully it's coming through on camera you can see the L brackets and that's what rolls into the back so again now like I said I've cleaned all them 
you can use a hoover I had an airline that just blew it out it doesn't really matter as long as you get all the dust and crap out <coughs> so yeah and basically I should have you can get very cheap if you do a lot of these I should be doing it but I'm not you can get an ESD mat to stop any electric charge or anything doing any damage to them but anyway so we have our motherboard now and you can see again we've got all this thermal paste on our heat sinks here this is the chip just behind them our heat sinks are on the other parts so again a good clean make sure all the dust and crap is off because that's only going to do um, your damage when you put it back together um, and over time this is what happens you see it just all goes kind of brittle and it just doesn't work anymore and the computer knows it's not put to the heat sinks properly so it just shuts down to stop um, anything blowing up which is a good thing because if it didn't you'd have more problems than this so what I need to do now is need to get some alcohol wipe um, you could, there's loads of different ways of buying it. I've got it in little um, chassis things which I'll show you now I have these little Medicare alcohol pack wipes they're exactly the same but what you want to do is make sure you get all this I'll just zoom in there so you can see what I'm doing hopefully you got the idea of what when I was taking it apart um, obviously when I put it back together I'll show you so that might be a little bit easier you can see where things go basically all we're doing is wiping all this off take a few minutes just take your time get it as nice and clean as possible on the actual flat of the board well, not the board but the actual flat of it bits around the outside don't take them out but you don't want them staying there either so nice and clean just going to break all that off Yeah, flat bladed screwdriver, just be careful and just kind of break all this crap off the sides. Yeah, a bit of a shake. Now, as you can see, we've got all them nice and clean. You want to do the same. On the heat sinks of the fan unit so this is now the fan unit so with the fan sits in behind here and again you want to clean off all all the paste on here as you can see it really doesn't take a long time this is still the same alcohol wipe the more time you spend at this it takes a few minutes the, the cleaner you get everything inside the better for yourself now there is obviously a setting to make the fan spin the other way to actually clean the fan but once it's all here you might as well clean as best as you can a little bit more there yeah so we're nice and clean now there's a couple, uh, well not so much couple, but there's loads and loads of different thermal pastes out there. You can get on eBay and all sorts of stuff. Some of it's really expensive and some of it's cheap. To be honest, I haven't found any difference. There is certain stuff that the more expensive the better, solder for instance, but thermal paste, I haven't found anything. So this is the stuff I have. Just getting a view. It's just thermal grease, it's in a little syringe. Um, and yeah, you can get it in your little squeezy tubes like toothpaste and all sorts. But this is this is the stuff I have. Even says on it for uh, CPU cooling and stuff, which is basically what we're doing. Right, I need to bring a motherboard back. I have a little heat gun which I use. Um, you have to be obviously careful. You don't want to go too close to anything because there's a lot of sensitive stuff on this board, and you don't want to do too much damage. We don't want to do any damage to be honest. So I'm just going to heat the area, I'll show you I have a, a, a hot air gun. I'm just going to heat the area, then put on the paste and spread it. Now my heat gun is just a Black & Decker. It's actually adjustable heat which is good. About halfway for this particular one. And I'll go a good bit away from the board and literally let it cool down and then do the paste. 
Yeah, I can take that now. It's that far away from my hand, so. Right, YouTubers, I was just watching the video back and I wasn't really explaining very well on the board. It is important that you spend a good half an hour heating up the board, gradually heating. Don't just go too close to it, just gradually heat it. You really want the board hot so you can't touch it. Um, but don't just blast heat into it, just build the, build the heat up in it for about half an hour because you need them chips to reset. You're trying to get everything to basically reset in the chips. Um, and to trick it back into working. Um, so yeah, been about half an hour heating that board. That's the key is heating the board. Um, I'm gonna put this obviously in the middle because I didn't explain it very well. Obviously these boards can take a bit of heat because obviously them things do, you know, without a doubt they do give some serious heat. I'm just gonna leave this for a few minutes now and then I'm gonna put the paste on. And that should be plenty of time. Now typical, I can't find my spreader, it's just a little plastic spreader. Um, I'm just gonna use a business card I have. Basically, squeeze the grease on, thermal paste, grease, all the same stuff. And we're literally just spreading it. You want a nice layer on it. Take your time. Don't worry about it if it drops down the edge, it's not really important, you just want a nice smooth layer. Now, that's it. Basically what we've got to do now is put it back together. And like I said, now I'm putting it back together, I'll show you basically where all the bolts are. Sorry about the taking it apart, part, part, part. So, need to put the cover back on. Like I said, it depends on the on the PS3. Some are slightly different. Um, this is the one of the kind of original ones. So I just want to make sure that's all the way up. Nothing stopping it. It's not exactly square. There's little lugs in the side of the plastic that go straight through the board. So you'll know when you get it right. So I just have to move that up slightly. Turn it around, push the board into the back connectors. Now, that's into the back connector. The two lugs on the side, one here, the one there go all the way through. The board is now flat to the to the metal case. Now you one or two ways now, you can either put on this particular one you have to put the, the fan casing back, the cowl back or we can fit the other side of the plastic because we have to turn it back around, when you turn it back around this can sometimes fall out so what I like to do and also when you turn it around be careful you don't get any crap stored in this paste you want to make sure your bench is nice and clean so I'm just going to put this end back and as you put this end back what you want to make sure is we've got the little lugs in the end which we have to lift up and roll in but not only that all these cables all the cables have to come through the right holes all these ribbon cables so what I like to do is go at the back first hook them in as you can see they've been hooked in sure hooked in now it's a bit tricky so they've been hooked in and I'm gonna just lay it down flat but before it goes completely flat 
I'm just going to poke these ribbon cables through the holes that they need to be poked through. It's a bit fiddly this. Here, push that through. Little ribbon cable here. Now, again, these little lugs will line up with the lugs that have gone through, and most importantly, we have our little hooks in the back. Now, so we can now put our heat sink back on, which is our fan again. You'll see there's one, two, three, four lugs on this, and they match up with the slightly elongated holes over here onto the thing. So again, you can't you can't put this upside down, you can't put this wrong, you just can't. You know? And obviously these pads have to line up with them as well, so you know you, you know you're right. Now, as you can see, that's gone on nice. What I like to do now, hold it, turn the whole thing around, lay it on the floor, and put in these things I showed you before. And the reason I like to do that now is because that will hold, that will hold on the actual heat sink of the fan. And these are the lugs that come out of it. There's kind of the weird lugs. You can't really go wrong. They're, they're, they're only, they've got a big, they've only got a little short, you see that? A little short screw and a big thick collar. There's four of them. Just line them up. And you want to make sure these are even. Because, because this is spring loaded, this is like a spring loaded board here you want to make sure you tighten them down nice and evenly so yeah like I said I'm just going to screw these bolts nice and evenly these hat these act as heat sinks as well it actually draws the heat up from the board so just nice and evenly So I'm going to turn it around now and we have the heatsink on for the fan. So we're good at the minute. Now the next thing is put the fan back. Again, fan can only go in one way. You've got three little screws and you've got this little tab where it sits in. Because if you see around here, it won't fit in any other way. You know, nothing will line up, so you can only fit it in one way. So it all lines up. And like I said, what I suggest you do is, when you take out the screws, put them, so the fan has three screws, you can even put them on a piece of paper and mark fan, do whatever you want, but obviously, you know, you have a little wire here, you can plug that wire in to the cord down here again, this will only go in one way, you can't go wrong, there's only one place for it, so again, you can't put it in wrong. Now, three screws. Now, the fan's in. And like I said, obviously blow it all out because you know the dust can get caught in all these fins and everything here. It's just a nightmare. Now there's two little screws that go in here. So we need to put them in next. Now these screws are really small. You can see them here, they're tiny. And you need a different screwdriver, a really small flat bay, uh, sorry, Phillips screwdriver. Now be careful when you screw in any of these screws in because they're only going, well, depending on where they're going, they're, they're, they're going into circuit boards and do you know, so you don't want to over tighten them because you can easily round them and cause problems and crack boards and do all sorts of stuff you don't particularly want to be doing. So, <clears throat> two there, three there, the little clock 
just plug the clock back in, or the little, uh, not the clock, but the actual battery that keeps the time and the dates and stuff. Again, on some PlayStations, it's in a different place. It's on the inside. It's not here. This is one of the first ever ones, and the first ever PS3. So they're slightly different, but you get the idea, you know. So now that's that. Turn it around. Next thing you want to do is put on the back plastic uh, case cover, whatever you want to call it. So again, can only go in one way. It has to line up. The HDMI cables, HDMI cables, the optical cable and stuff like that. And again, you want to be careful because like I was showing them little clips, but this just should literally go down and you'll hear little clips just like that. It's easier putting it on than it is taking it off. And again, you can see where these three clips at the bottom just clip in. So that's in now. Okay. It's always good just to go over everything, make sure nothing is, you know, the, it hasn't come out of the likes of these. You know, the, all the wires are trapped in the little where they should be, and nothing's out there, out of the ordinary. Like that should be clipped in there, and then you miss that. So it's good to go back, just clip that in there like that. Make sure everything's tight. Now we can actually move that to the side for the minute. Get our bottom cover. Now, a few things here you want to make sure, depending on which one you have. This is just to bring the lights up and stuff. You want to make sure if there's anything here that it hasn't fallen out. Now, this just literally slots straight in. A bit tight, a bit tricky. You want to make sure, like as you can see from mine. The power cable slid out so you want to make sure that's in. This has little grooves so this back panel actually slits in behind this panel. Now, now we're getting we're getting there. So just a case of putting the the uh, Blu-ray player black black Blu-ray player back, the power supply on the few little card readers we have in the front, power it on. Let's hope it works. <laughs> now, it doesn't really matter what you want to put on first, but what I like to put on first is the power supply. Again, you cannot put this the wrong way. If you try, it just will not line up, it will not fit, so don't be worried about it. Um, you can see you have a cable at the front and a cable connection at the back simple and again it lines up with little lugs so you cannot go wrong now you want to make sure this is another thing here these are your power cables here to the board make sure they're nice and clean make sure they're not bent because if they're, if they're bent together or anything obviously it's not going to slot into your power unit and don't force this in this literally just just sits straight over the top and go in just like that. I haven't pressed that down. That's that's its own weight. It's pushed it down. I don't have to force it down. Now it's a case of putting the three bolts on the back. Oh, see now, just a little earth cable has just gone underneath it. So we just moved it out of the way. Look, and the two bolts on the front. But don't forget that this earth cable here. Is actually bolted separately so you don't want to forget that it's very important actually I think yeah sorry that earth cable should be just underneath the power supply there it takes it out of the way then so let's just bolt this baby in place See, that's me getting ahead of myself now, so um, I forgot to do, I forgot to put the bolts back in to the actual, put the motherboard in place, so I'm just going to do that now, all the bolts around the edge. You see where all the little arrows are, again, if it doesn't show particularly well on camera, you will see um, when you're doing it, there's little arrows and there's little screws to go through, so I'm going to put all them back on.
Now, one thing you have to be aware of, you want to make sure you don't uh, mess up your screws because some have rough threads and some have fine threads. So don't force any screw down the hole. If it, if it doesn't go, it's the wrong one. Now, we've put all our screws along the, the outside now, so that's down. Now, we can put our power supply in. You see, what you can actually do first is you can actually put this earth on first if you want. Now, you can actually see a little symbol. Zoom into that, hopefully. We'll see. Now, hopefully it's coming through on camera. The little earth signal, so you know the earth goes there. It's just something to be aware of. And again, you want to get the right bolt, because on this one, it has a little spring washer. And it has a big washer. Because obviously there's a fairly big hole on this earth, so you want to make sure... There's nothing worse than putting the wrong screw in and, or even finally forgetting a screw and then the thing won't work. You have to rip it all apart again just for one screw. It happens. Now we can put the power supply in. Like I said, just want to, no pressure. It should go down its own weight. Just like that. Which it does. Now, screw this down. Now we go back and plug in the first lead. Again, you want to make sure you get it nice and straight before you push it in. Make sure the wires are behind this plastic so again you can get the top cover in without catching anything. It's very important. Put the second one in. Now them out of the way now we need to put now the next thing you want to do is put your Wi-Fi board back on Wi-Fi board has this little aerial here as you can see and right at the edge there's a little cutout and the way this goes in the ribbon cable has to lay flat because the ribbon cable goes into this so you want to make sure the ribbon cable is on top of your board angle it at the top and it will slot in to that slot I'll just zoom in hopefully you can see it a bit better Camera focus, in too far. Now you can just see there, I'm angling it about 45 degrees and it slots in and then this just sits straight down and lines up. Lines up, it's nice and flat and the four holes line up. This little cable then We'll sort that in a minute, we'll just put that over to the side by the second. Lift up the black pin there with your fingers for the ribbon cable. Ribbon cable then just goes straight down on it. It's a bit tricky so I hope I won't get in the way. Lift it up, slide the ribbon cable in. Yeah. Now, push the ribbon cable in and just clip this down here. Yeah, nice little clip ribbon cables in. Don't force them because, again, they're very delicate, and if you force them, you're just going to break them. I haven't forgot this little screw here as well, so I'm going to do all these screws now and put all these screws down. So now I'm just going to put these four little screws into this board. 
Now we can put on this particular one, like I said, this one has a card reader. Um, that just slots in between there. There we go. And now the card reader is on. Make sure that properly out of the way. There we go. So what I'm going to do next is put the card reader on. Now what you have to do first is put the ribbon cable on. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. Clip that little plastic fella down. Oh, come out. They are tricky. To slide it in, push it down. Yeah. This has to, the ribbon cable on this goes on the bottom. So you actually can't see it from the top. It's all hidden. Two screws. And this fella is down. Yeah. Now, the Wi Fi antenna, there's a little um, thing where it's actually sellotaped to. Um, I broke it off, but there should be enough there again. Let's lift it up a little bit and just put it back down. Yeah, that'll be fine. Again, a little screw to hold it down. Now, it's down. I just need to put a bit of salad tape on this because it's just kind of in the way a little bit. it back through there. Just tuck it under there. Now just one more thing really. And this is an actual Blu-ray player. Now again it's gonna be quite tricky to film but this is just another ribbon cable. Alright, so that ribbon cable's in. Just want to be careful. Make sure it's lined up at the back. Again, like I said, it's the actual bolts from the, the top case that actually hold this in place, but I want to make sure it's there, thereabouts. Only one cable can only go in one place, so again, it can't go wrong. Now the little light control at the front Need to put this back this little case for it oh yeah that's my fault there I need to take out these two screws again right at the top to put this down not a big deal Just whip them out Put this little ribbon cable back in. Again, these ribbon cables are a bit of a nightmare, they're very fiddly. But there's no pressure on them, that's the thing. They they just go in and they clip in. You don't have to there's no force on them. If you have to start forcing them, stop because you'll do damage. So I'm just making sure this Blu-ray player is lined up because this is where the screws go. Now, 
the way you put on the front cover there's a couple of hooks at the front so you want to leave it 90 degree angle up to the and then literally slide the front cover in and just lay it over the top and then hooks will actually go into the base and there you go it's down it's nice and flush and it's down it's just a case of putting the top screws on now and then we can power it up and uh, hope for the best all right and there's one two three four five six seven um, screws. Now this one has it's broken on the side, so this screw is not going back in. If the short one, 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 now you just want to make sure that the case is sealed all the way around, which this one is. Put the hard drive back in again. Can only go one way. It goes in first. And then pushes to the side, the whole lines up. This little blue screw goes in. Tab goes down, cover goes on. That's it. Now I'm not gonna put the top cover on yet, I'm just gonna test this to make sure it powers on. Now YouTubers, I couldn't finish this in the shed because um, I had no controls or anything and uh, no way of checking it properly. So it's a telly there and we have the PS3 there and that one's mine so it is definitely this one. Right, let's see if it works. So I need to look at the back, have a red light which is good. The green light. We still have a green light, which is good. I got the wrong setting. What do I need to do? Ah, there we go. Look. Press the PS button. PS3. There this is. There we go. It works. So there we go. It works. Well, hope this helps. Thumbs up the video and subscribe. See, don't forget. Get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.